Hi there, in this video we're going to look at the Laplace transform of the complex exponential. Now just as a reminder, we the last video we looked at the Laplace transform of the, the real exponential, so that's say e to the at, and we're looking at the Laplace transform of that, and we were able to say the Laplace transform of that is equal to 1 upon s minus a, and that's for the real part of s greater than zero and we were able to say that we had a pole when the denominator equals zero that is when s minus a equals zero or when s equals the value of a so it means that we could choose by choosing the value of a we can position the pole and if that's a complex plane sigma j omega we can position the pole anywhere along this axis okay so if we were to say for example uh, a was to um, equal 2, then the pole would have been positioned at, will it be 1 upon s minus 2, okay, so you would have um, a would equal uh, 2, so the the value s would be uh, s equals a, the value of the pole, so it would be uh, the pole would be s equals uh, 2. So you can look kind of like 1 and 2, and we can draw a line there, that's our pole there and it converges on the right hand side here okay but we can choose uh, any value for a so we can make a negative so we could, could have had the pole say over here in which case the uh, the convergence would be everything from the right hand side of this point here okay so that's allowing us to choose the pole position here with respect to our sigma axis now we can choose the pole position with respect to our j omega axis as well if we look at the plus transform of e to the j omega t so that's going to equal uh, going to be 1 upon s now no longer going to be s minus a it's going to be s minus the j omega okay so oh, i suppose i can quite quickly just show that to you so you would have an integral from e to the minus s t times e to the j omega t from zero to infinity by dt so that's going to equal uh, the integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus and it would be s minus j omega t by dt so the Laplace transform of this is just the Laplace transform is given by the exponent which would be 1 upon s minus j omega so it meant that we would have a pole whenever the s minus j omega equals zero s minus j omega equals zero or that's s equals j omega okay so that's where our, our pole would be in this instance here so we could redraw that out okay and that's our sigma and j omega so our e to the positive j omega t will give us a pole along this axis here okay where omega is positive so say it's this point here okay but the um, convergence will still be for the um, the real part of s um, greater um, than zero okay so that we should be pop that down here okay so that would be for the real part of s is greater than zero now we could also allow um, omega be negative in which case we have e to the minus j omega t okay and the laplace transform then of e to the uh, minus j omega t would just be equal 1 upon s and this, this case time here of s uh, plus j omega okay and that's for the real part of s greater than zero so we could say that the pole would exist when s plus j omega equals zero or say s equals minus j omega so that would be somewhere uh, down this side here okay so it ranging down here okay so depending on whether we make our omega positive or negative we'll allow the poles to range up and down here so now we have a, a method of providing the position for the pole along this axis and position of the pole along that axis 
Now, if we combine the two together, that is, we have a function, the Laplace transform of the a function that had a, both a real and an imaginary part. Okay, so the real part in this instance here would be a value of a, and the imaginary part would be a, a value of g omega. So that we had a function, say, e to the power of, say, a plus g omega t, okay, then the plus transform of that is just going to be 1 upon s, and we're going to have minus a plus g omega, okay, so it means that we are going to position the pole here at a point um, a plus j omega, because we can say that there's a pole there when the denominator is zero, so that's s minus a plus j omega equals zero, or when s equals a plus j omega. Okay, so we are then able to position that pole, if that's a sigma, that's a j omega, we can position that pole at a plus j omega, so there'll be some value a, Okay, and then with some value g omega, and we could position the pole, say, there, and again it would converge for everything on the right hand side. Okay, but of course, a could be positive or negative, omega could be positive or negative, so we can position that anywhere along that positive or negative axis, sigma, anywhere along the positive or negative axis, g omega. So we've got a method here of providing a pole at any point in this complex plane, including the point at zero, okay, when we just make um, the uh, the value of j omega zero and the, the value of a equaling zero. Okay, so that gives us an indication there then. I suppose if we were to look at this here, we've got a, a couple of transform pairs. There's, there's one there, okay, for the negative value, and have we got one up, what, one up here for the uh, the positive value. Okay, but what's important here is just to see how we're able to position the pole anywhere within this axis. Now, I've got a couple of images there on MATLAB which I can I can bring up if I can just bear with me for a, a few seconds, see if I can I can find them. So what we have here is the Laplace transform of e to the j omega t. And you can see that the, the j omega axis runs along this direction, the sigma axis runs along that direction, the sigma is equal to zero, okay, but the, the j omega is equal to minus one, okay, so we're starting to shift up this, uh, sorry, it's equal to one, okay, so we're starting to shift up this axis, okay. Now, if we were to look at um, e to the uh, minus j omega, then we would shift down this axis here to minus one. Okay, so I'll just show you that just now. I've got got one of those sitting here somewhere. Okay, so that's going to show us e to the minus g omega. So we've just shifted down the axis, and let's have a look and see if we can see it. So that's the sigma axis there. Sigma axis is sitting at zero. Okay, there's the g omega axis. Okay. Bring up a wee bit like that, okay. So we can see our, our sigma axis is sitting at zero, but our j omega axis this time here is sitting at minus one, okay. So if we were to um, choose some uh, value e to the a plus j omega, okay, as our function that we're going to find the Laplace transform of, so we find the Laplace transform, it will allow us to position this pole anywhere uh, within this. Um, access. Okay, so thank you for listening and goodbye.